and welcome back. Now, as part of my Home Alone project, part of what you can just about see over here in this side of the screen, um, which is coming to a nice conclusion now. One thing I needed, though, was a touch switch. As you can see, the, um, the circular disc on the top here is, in fact, a touch-sensitive disc. Well, in fact, I lie a bit there because it's, it's not the actual disc that's sensitive anymore. It's the bit underneath, which... It's in there and it's difficult to see, which is why I've got this stuff on my workbench. Now, touch switches are really good because you don't need a physical switch. I mean, it's, it saves up all, all the hassle of wiring it up and everything, and you don't actually need a physical connection most of the time. Now, I've used touch switches. I've got three in my house um, connected to Arduinos, all exactly wired the same, and they're really, really cheap and easy to do. And I've got one here. On my workbench this one here so if i touch that big fat washer there you'll see the led lights up now that is the equivalent if you like of that thing there but i won't go near it because that makes an awful lot of noise now this is fine for an arduino or arduino family so like um, a nano in fact i've got mine connected up to mainly all it requires is two pins a resistor an optional capacitor but it's it's worthwhile for stability and then whatever it is you're connecting it to and uh, the good thing about this is it's self-configuring, which means if there's something a little bit close to this switch that changes the capacitance near it, it configures it every 10 seconds. Well, whatever you put into the code, actually. I think by default it might be every minute or so, I can't remember. So that's, that's one way we can do it with an Arduino. So if you just want a signal to indicate to your sketch this has now been pressed, or that's been pressed, rather than wiring up an actual switch, a touch switch is a good way to go. In fact, let me show you uh, Benny's Run, which has a touch switch and has had a touch switch for well quite a while now, actually. And there's the equivalent one indoors as well. Um, and then we'll show how you wire up all these components and things. Not that there's many. Oh, hang on. Components. Time for a word from our sponsor. I just wanted to let you know that LCSE Electronics, China's leading electronics components distributor, are sponsoring this video. In the heart of Shenzhen, China, they have a 10,000 square meter warehouse with a much larger one under construction, an investment of some 500 million shenminbi. With their semi-automatic machinery, they can pick our orders to have it ready in four hours and sent via a variety of global shipping options. As an example, for orders to the USA, Europe and Australia, we can get them in just three days. Try them now. And there we are. In fact, we'll be referring back to them again in just a little while when we talk about some of these uh, bits over here. But uh, yeah, let's look at Benny's cat cage first. And you'll see effectively this, exactly what I've got here. OK, slightly different code because I needed to do a slightly different job. But effectively this in Benny's cat cage. So this is Benny's cat run, and uh, well, Benny's in there at the minute. Right, let me show you the um, little monitor that's inside. Here we have Benny. Yeah, hello Benny, you all right? Yeah. Up above, near the door, we have this monitor here, which um, monitors things like door opening and closing. You'll hear it when I open the door. Okay, but that's not the bit we're concentrating on today. What we're concentrating on today is this little cat picture here. When I touch it, the blue light goes off, which means this is now deactivated. That's just a power LED there. Touch it again, and on it goes. Now you can see this actual metal, um, it's supposed to be a, like a, a collar emblem, you know, thing you hang around a cat's neck, I'm guessing. Um, it's actually screwed in here, and it's actually physically connected to the stuff inside. Now it works pretty well, although it was a little bit too sensitive to begin with, and I had to increase the value of the resistor but that's that's pretty good and in there is a, a nano and that's um all i've ever used for so this one and there's a similar one inside on the receiving end of this because inside here there's a a 433 megahertz trans uh, transmitter benny would you like to say any words perhaps you know about your uh, your cat monitor you can't come too close <laughs> oh look at this friendliest cat in the whole world this one and of course he writes all my C code for me as well, because uh, I can't get to grips with it, but he knows. 
And he just meows if I get it wrong. Isn't that right, Benny? <laughs> oh, now he's licking me. I haven't got anything on me, so I don't know why he's licking me. See you later, Benny. Right, so that's pretty good. And Benny has given his seal of approval for me to use that piece of footage of him. He said that's fine. He signed a waiver. Well, he meowed at me a bit, so I guess I took that as a waiver. So he's included in the video now. Now that's great. This 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 bit of um, wiring here is easy to do. We can have a very, very quick look at this sketch. I'll put it up on the GitHub, of course, so you can download it. So let's have a look at that. Right, here we are then. Now, the library that um, Arduino give us for free, if you like, is this one here called Capacitive Sensor. Great. Nice and free, and they've done the hard work. And all you say on this line here, you create the object, so you say capacitive sensor, whatever name you feel like giving it here. You say it's from this pin, that's the transmitter pin, to this receiver pin, which is the one you touch, and that's it. That's pretty simple, isn't it? All right, there's a few other parameters you can call upon as well, but I mean, as a simple little touch switch that's all you need now the other thing you really need is to know the the touch level so when I when I press this thing here what level of signal ends up on pin 2 in this example and is it 50 500 5000 well you can test that simply by putting a serial dot print value in which is basically what I did and I found that uh, in this particular example a thousand works pretty well so, and I've also got an LED pin here, wired up to pin 11, just to show you the thing working. So, what I do here in the setup is to say auto calibrate every 10 seconds. Now, you don't have to do that. You can leave it to the default. I've got here a default equals 20 seconds, question mark. I can't remember. But there's a lovely library written by the lovely Arduino people. It's read-only now, unfortunately, but it certainly does still have a lot of merit so if we go over to the browser here we are capacitive sensing library basically what i started from and how i've used it it tells you exactly what you need to do and something in here well there we are there's a nice picture look of the uh, the send pin and the receive pin with this resistor between now that resistor despite what arduino themselves say I found something like an 820k works okay. One mega ohm basically would be fine. Now they do say if you put a bigger value in there, like 10 mega ohm, then you don't actually have to touch anything. You can just approach it and it will start sensing that you're there and switch on. Now I've not had an awful lot of uh, luck with that, but we'll try it a bit later on right? and we'll see how well it works. Anyway, there's all this information now. I'll put a, I'll put a link into my GitHub so that you know where to find this. And remember, as it says, it's read-only now because they've moved this onto a different platform. But the information there is still 100% OK. So back to the code. All we're doing in the loop is saying, if I've touched something, set the pin high for the LED and if I haven't set it low so it's basically an on off and what does the do touch do well first of all we take this uh, sentence here and it says look my value that I'm receiving from that little disk is capacitive sensor now 70 now that means take that many samples now it takes a sample and a few microseconds really so it makes sense to even them out so I've said take 70 which takes well I'm afraid I can't tell you how long, but probably, you know, a couple of milliseconds, if that. And then if it's above that value that we described at the top, in this case, a thousand, it says, I'll take that as a touch. Now, I don't think that a thousand is particularly high. It's not. When I touch this disk on here, it can leap up to sort of 10, 20, 30,000. It's really quite sensitive. So, uh, yeah, a thousand is, is a ballpark figure. Your mileage may vary. And uh, then it returns a value, yes, I did detect a touch, or no, I didn't. Simple, really, isn't it? I mean, you can't get a lot simpler than that. And then the, the LED, as I say, is lit up, depending on whether that truth is there or not. So, 
you've seen the code, you've seen the circuit. Um, I'll draw out the circuit a little bit later and just post that up. Touch it, it goes on. Let go, it goes off. Okay, great, wonderful. And I thought, obviously, as I've used it many times before in my code, um, I'm going to use exactly this in my Home Alone project. Oops, bit of a problem there, because this is not an Arduino for one, but secondly, I've run out of pins. I'm already using the RX pin for um, something. can't remember what now, but anyway, I'm using the RX pin, you know, out of the TX RX pair, just so that I don't have to use a pin expander on this board. Yeah, in hindsight, maybe I should have done, but anyway, that's just the way it goes. So I couldn't use this because one, I haven't got two pins to spare, and I was hoping to use the only analog pin that an ESP8266 gives us. Now, first of all, I just tried connecting this, well, this really, with its little DuPont cable, directly to A0. I thought, well, that's surely going to be enough, isn't it? And it was very, very nearly enough. Except that during my testing, suddenly it would detect a touch, even though it was behind me on a shelf doing absolutely nothing. And that's just not reliable enough, because this thing here is being built for my dear mother, who requested me to build me this, would you believe? She's 91 and living in Germany, where she uh, comes from. And uh, she said, build me this, Home Alone, I've called it, or Smart Care. Basically, it's a person monitor, an activity monitor. Okay, so there's a sensor at the front, this PIR. Um, no, we're not going down the camera route. That was obviously far too invasive. I'm not doing that. And given that she's in a flat by herself now, there's a, a number of family members within a short drive of her. And she just wanted to be sure that somebody would know if she wasn't moving about. Now, I couldn't use the A0 port directly connected to this, or all this, because it just was not reliable enough. It was 99% reliable, but not really good enough, is it? So what else is there? Well, then I remembered that I bought this. This is a simple little touch pad capacitive touchpad in the same way that this is capacitive but this has got a little chip on it a tt what is it now it's a ttp223 i think yes it is in fact a ttp223 chip built on this little tiny board now i bought a pack of 10 here's in fact the the remaining eight because there's one now in there and there's one on that red board over there and as you can see they are very very small indeed Th these are eight panelized one you just snap them off as you need them and you can see they are very small indeed aren't they? right so there's the ttp223 that little chip on it and um, there's just a couple of resistors and an led so i thought i know perhaps i can use that and lo and behold it works like an absolute dream so if i move stuff about on here we'll have a look at that version instead Right, OK, so the TTP223 touch board is here. And if I touch it, you watch the um, LED at the back there. So I touch it, it goes on, let go, it goes off, right? And in fact, you don't actually have to physically touch it. I can get my finger reasonably close. Let's see, I'm not actually touching the board itself. And uh, it works out that I'm close enough, which is great. Because in my Home Alone project, this one here, as you can see, this disc, although I've screwed it to one of these pillars, is not actually electrically connected to anything else. There's the TTP underneath this thing here. All right, that's that's connected to this board here. But all this, this this thick Perspex coaster that I've got on top, plus this, is not connected to anything. And yet, when I touch this. It does detect it. I'll do it once and then I'm going to switch it off because it. this is an exit delay. So when my mum wants to go shopping or something, rather than giving us all um, an hour of worry as the information being sent to ThingSpeak it suddenly stops, this actually sets it so that ThingSpeak gets a particular value so we know she's away and she's set this. In fact, you'll see it on the board as well. Um, I'll do it all on here. What you'll see is... 
instead of counting the number of movements or activity level here it says she's going out there we are Omi is out Omi the German word for grandmother she's not my grandmother but that's what we all call her okay the light flashes like mad and it's beeping not very loudly because I have actually got a cover on the front of that beeper you wouldn't believe how annoying it can be when you're developing something and it's beeping right screen's gone off again after 15 seconds and that's how it's going to stay now hopefully for the rest of the recording time cool okay please stop right stopped that's 30 seconds let's move on okay so this this touch switch works just like that and that's fine but what would happen then as i say like this one here if we wanted to put say this let me disconnect this now if i wanted to put this big fat washer over this well as you can see look it, it's immediately switched it on even if i dangle it without me being close to it just putting this look see the leds going on so how are we going to do that how does that work well let me attach this to here and we'll see what happens right i've, I've blue tacked this on so there's no electrical connection between this big fat washer and the rest of it but of course the ttp223 device thinks well you, you're touching me the, the capacitance has changed to such a degree that i'm permanently on but what happens if we disconnect the power and then reset it up right let's do that i'll disconnect the power and reset up the power and ah the light's not on anymore is it it stayed off why because this device is self calibrating so upon switch on it calibrates itself what the current capacitance is he goes right as long as there's not a deviation from that i'm switched off so now if i touch or bring my hand close to this washer there we are look just the same as what it always was which is why of course it works so wonderfully well over here okay nobody has to connect anything to anything it's just just your presence that does it see i don't touch anything i mean you can touch it it's not going to make any difference but you don't have to that's the whole point now these little TTP223 devices are quite frankly pennies. So let's have a look, where, first of all, where I got it from and what you could do if you wanted to make your own little tiny breadboard up, or not breadboard, just printed circuit board up, for example. So first off, if you went to LCSE, for example, the sponsor of this video today, um, you would find that they actually have five of these different units in stock, the actual tiny little um, chips themselves and they have various versions now the where the number has an n after it like this one here n that means it's more sensitive than the non-n version and there's a data sheet that tells you all about this there it is so there's the n suffix and it says it somewhere in here about the n being there we are the sensitivity of the n version is better than the non-n version but the stability of the inversion is worse so page of money takes your choice uh, the, ver the versions on these devices is the non-n version and for me it works just brilliant so you could go and get the individual ic from lcsc here and make your own little printed circuit board up or you can buy them from banggood for next to nothing we have here 10 pieces for two dollars ninety which is probably about what two pound thirty ish two pound twenty seven well that's for ten pieces right ten pieces two pound twenty seven it's on the and the good thing about what i like about banggood is that look at the shipping time here seven to twenty business days and you could if you wanted to spend the money of course you could get it quicker than that so if we look at the different shipping options um seven to ten four to nine is the one i normally try and go for actually a priority direct mail one pound 86 extra and sometimes i do really think it's worth doing that for me i'm talking about because you know i'm experimenting doing stuff if you're just building a project you might think no i'll save the money and wait for seven to twenty days but four to nine days is pretty good i think okay right let's um well the code for that particular one there is none because obviously it's a self-contained circuit the output from here goes high when you touch it 
and when you release it it goes low hence why it's going into this one single 10k resistor into a that's probably a is that a bc458 or 222n2222 or something we used this same transistor in a video a little while ago didn't we like still can't remember what it is they're all the same these npn transistors if you're just using them as a switch they really are all right let's um, draw out a very simple circuit diagram for both these because they're pretty very, well they're very similar in themselves right here's the very simple circuit then for the ttp223 module that i showed you there from banggood or indeed if you're creating your own one it's just the module itself um, positive negative and the output now i'll put an arbitrary 10k in here because i didn't feel like driving this transistor with the full output um, it's always good to put some kind of limiting transistor in. now uh, resistor in there and i just chose this one well pretty much at random really led um, a resistor there now that all depends on what this led is i don't know let's say 100 for now it'll probably prevent anything blowing up but you have to really work out how much current this is going to take out what voltage talking of voltage what are we driving this at then given that we're in well i say arduino land we're also in esp8266 land aren't we my home alone project is an esp8266 which means i'm running at 3.3 volts in fact the voltage range here is anything from 2 volts to 5.5 uh, that's for this device obviously not the transistor but this therefore encompasses anything that esp8266 or esp32 wants and arduinos that's great um did i say 5.5 i should say 5.5 there we are 5.5 volts so we're not at the limit of arduino voltage and that's it that is the circuit so if you were to put this into an arduino at this point here this will be connected to a gpio pin here and you would simply determine when it goes high so in your gpio pin of an arduino say we had this one here and that was i don't know d10 or something all you'd have is a little resistor going down to ground maybe i don't know 47k something like that just to make sure that this really is brought down to ground let me just zoom out a little bit there we are and then this will be connected to that so that when this goes high it overrides anything that this 47k is going to do and make that pin go high i mean it's it's really simple stuff to do okay what about the two pin sensor then for the arduino that doesn't require any additional hardware save one resistor and a little capacitor let's draw that next so this is the arduino way of doing the capacitive touch sensor just choose two arbitrary pins obviously not zero and one because they're the utx and rx but any other two should work okay um, in this example here on the on the bench i've got d5 and d2 a resistor between them and this little tiny capacitor which is only something like 22 to 400 pfs uh, to ground it gives extra stability now they recommend it and i've always used it funny enough because stability is the one thing i did need the current version i've got in there is uh in the on the bench is 100 pf and that seems to work okay now as i say what they say in their in their blurb on that uh, data sheet that uh, i showed you in the arduino library they suggest something like a one meg upwards right up to 50 meg they say but i've found it it's not that great if you stick 820k to about a meg in here it's absolutely rock solid on off as you saw when you try 10 meg you start getting a little bit of a lag so you sort of you know you touch it and then you let go and it's not quite in sync with the touch anymore uh, and it says you should better do it from something like 100 uh, 100 millimeters away from the touchpad i've not found that to be the case either whether it's the auto calibration because i'm connecting it to a breadboard or something i don't know but uh, i'm not sure that having something that far away is going to be that useful but then again depends on what you're building doesn't it so you've seen it running with um what i've got in there at the moment well we'll have a closer look i can't possibly read it from here not with my eyes and i'll stick a 10 meg in and you'll see for yourself what difference it makes so the resistor in here at the moment that one between the two pins is 820k and the reason i chose 820k is because that's what i'm using benny's cat run i'm using my fridge alarm uh, inside as well the second part of benny's cat run thing i found 820 to be quite stable and with my stable i mean i touch it and it goes on i leave my finger off and it goes off right 
So it's, as you would expect, a switch to behave. And yes, I didn't want it necessarily so that I could not touch it. I wanted it to be an actual touch. As light as it has to be, I do have to make physical contact with this washer thing uh, for it to work. OK, let's put a 10 meg in there and see what difference it makes. Right, the 10 meg's been put in. Right, so as you can see, it's um, still on because we've changed it. I've got to turn the power off so it auto calibrates. Right, the Arduino's booting up, sending out a few messages because we have got this on a serial monitor as well. Right, OK. So now, now do you see what I mean about the delay there? I'm pressing my finger on it that the LED doesn't come on instantly. Nor does it go off instantly. So yeah, the 10 meg thing, as I say, your mileage may vary. Experiment takes a few seconds, doesn't it, on the board here. OK, that's enough for that, really. Um, you've seen how it works for my Home Alone unit. I'm sneaking into the picture again here. Don't forget that I'll put the data sheet for that TTP223 product on my GitHub. Three pins, ground IO VCC, that's all there is. So simple. Cool. I think I think we've come to an end now. I'm off to the hairdressers and uh, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.